Welcome to the lecture on issues and challenges in congruential generators. In the last lecture, we discussed about the linear congruential generator and we had seen that as the seed value was selected. So, we saw that after certain time that number is repeating. So, that basically gives a limitation to the number of uh, random numbers which are generated before cycling. So, that is basically the period and what we have seen is that since it was 63, it we saw, saw that we got maximum up to 63 numbers. But many a times depending upon the different uh, values of the parameters like A, C or M, you may get even less number of these generated random numbers. So, these are the issues in case of LCGs, linear congruential generators or congruential generators that what should be the proper value of A, C or M. So, we will discuss about it and then uh, we also discuss about other requirements of the congruential generators or the number generated. So, what we saw that the properties which are required is the uniformity and independence. So, your uh, uniformity means the probability should be same. If you draw the plot between z i and z i plus 1, then it should be completely in the domain, the points should be scattered in whole of the domain. So, that basically is the test which tells that the number generated is uniform. Similarly, the density. So, density means there is very less gap between 0 and 1. We will see that many a times when we generate the numbers, you have a large gap in between the numbers. So, basically that is told to have less density. You must have large density of the numbers. It should be independent as it is uh, desired anyway the numbers generated should be independent. Cycling is there one issue because after certain time it will further start generating the similar numbers. So, this cycling is there and for having maximum density and to avoid this cycling, this is cycling basically. So, to avoid this cycling you can say that you must have maximum period. So, if the period is large, it is going to give you the maximum density and it can also avoid the cycling. So, for that you have the requirement of proper choice of A, C, M and X naught that is seed. So, once you have the proper choice of these parameters, then you can ensure that you have a uh, large number of random numbers generated before it is further recycled or further repeated. So, normally you are taking m as 2 raised to the power 31 or even more it is the requirement in today's world. So, you for such a large uh, generation of random numbers you require proper uh, you know um, selection of these parameters. So, for m normally m is taken as a power of 2. So, for m to be a power of 2 say suppose 2 raised to the power b that is taken as m and when c is not equal to 0 in that case. So, it is like a multiplicative type of generator. In that case the longest possible period you can get as 2 raised to the power b. When you get that c is relatively prime to m and a equal to 1 plus 4 k. So, this is one of the you know condition which is given that when you are taking m as 2 raised to the power b normally because we work on binary operation in computers. So, most of the numbers are represented in terms of you know 1 or 2. So, now if you take m as a power of 2 in that case suppose 2 raised to the power b and c is not equal to 0. So, the maximum period as we have seen earlier 
power the maximum period which we which can we can achieve is 2 raised to the power b. But for that the condition is that c should be relatively prime to m and a will be equal to 1 plus 4 k. So, it means k is an integer. So, either it will be 1 or 5 or 9 or 13 like that. So, this way if there that, that is the condition satisfied in that case you will get maximum possible period. Again uh, when m will be again 2 raised to the power b and c is equal to 0 in that case the maximum possible period will be p equal to m by 4. So, 2 raised to the power b minus 2. Okay? So, if suppose you are taking 2 raised to the power 6 in one case 64 and if you take proper value of and c is not equal to 0 and if you take proper value of a like 1, 5 or 9 or 13. So, in some case you can get the period of 64 whereas, if the c is not equal to 0 in that case period will be 64 by 4. So, it will be 16. So, period will come down to 16 and that 16 is also obtained when the, the seed value x naught is taken as the odd one and a is taken as 3 plus 8 k or 5 plus 8 k. So, a should be either 3 plus 8 k or 5 plus 8 k. So, k will be an integer. So, when you will see that when you have this value of a taken in that case you get the period of 16. You can check with a equal to 13, c equal to 0, m equal to 2 raised to the power 6 and x naught 1, 2, 3 or 4. Let us check how it will look like. So, in this case you have a is 13 and c is 0. m is 2 raised to the power 6 and x naught you can take either 1, 2, 3 or 4. So, your formula is a x i minus 1 and c is 0 and then it will be mod m. So, if your a is 13 and you take 1. So, as you go at 0 your x i is. So, if you are taking it is as 1 in that case your x i plus 1 x i plus 1 will be. So, x i. So, this x y if, if it is x i plus 1 here it will be x i in that case x i plus 1. So, in that case this number will be 1 into 13 and mod 64. So, it is 13. Then it is 1. So, x i is 13 x i plus 1 will be 13 into so, a into x i minus 1, a is 13 and 13 into 13. So, that is 169. So, 169 mod 64. So, it will be 169 mod 64. So, 64 into 2 128 and that is 41. So, further you go here it is coming as 41 here 41 into 13 is 533. So, again 64 uh, 533 mod 64. So, 64 into 8 is 512. So, it will be 21. Similarly, you go to 3 21 21 into 13 21 into 13 is 273. So, again you will have 17. So, 17 then again 17 multiplied by 13 th this way you will get 221. So, 64 into 3 192. So, it will be 29 and so on. So, this way it will go on uh, further producing we can go for some more steps if you go further. So, you have uh, 17 and this is 29 here. So, this 29 will come here again. 
this 29 multiplied by again 13, so that is 377 and 377 will be 16 in 64 into 5 320, so it will be 57 and 57 will come again in the 6th, it will be 57, 57 into 13 that is further 741. So, 741 again it will be 64 into 11 is 704, so it will be 37 like that. So, it will go on increasing. Now, it will go and it will have certain period and here as c is 0 you will see if you go proceed further you will see that the period is number coming number to 16. Now, let us check it for x i as so, the, so we have taken this value as a, a odd number an odd number. Now, let us take with another odd number if we take x i as initially as 2. So, what we get? with 2 we get 26. Two into thirteen, and then you are so a into x initial number. So initially you are getting two is say twenty six. Now if you take twenty six here, twenty six into thirteen three thirty eight. Now three thirty eight will be sixteen into four. 320, so it will be 18. 18 into 3, 13 that is 234. So, it is 64 into 3, 192 plus 42, so it is 42. And 42 multiplied by 13, 546, so it will be 64 into 8, 512, so then it is remaining 34. Similarly, 34, 34 into 13, 442. So, it will be 64 into you know uh, 6, 384. So, it will be 58, 58 and uh, multiplied by again if you take into 13. So, it will be 754. So, 754 will be 64 into 11, 704. So, it will be 50 like that it will move. Now, let us see with 4. Initial value as 4. If you take initial value as 4, then how long it goes? 4 into 13, 52. Then 52 into 13, so 52 into 13 will be 676. So, that will be 36, 36 into 13, 36 into 13 will be 468. So, it will be 464 into 7, 448 plus 20, so 20 and then 20 into 13, 260. So, 260 for that for 260 it will be 4. So, that we see that this 4 comes here. What we see that this 4 is coming here from. So, this is coming here. Now, after this 4 it will further go as 52 from 52 it will go to 36 like that. So, this is repeated. What we see that in this case as we take the different value of the seed the cycle. So, here you see that only in 4 it is getting vanished. So, you have only 4 different random numbers generated whereas, in this case it will go may be up to 8 or 16. So, in this case it, may, it will go if you check it, it will go to a larger value. So, this is what how the value of the seed can affect the cycle of the generated numbers. Now, so now speed and efficiency are aided by use of modulus m which is either a power of 2 
or close to a power of 2. So, basically uh, we have the speed as well as the efficiency and uh, what we see is that normally uh, depending upon the proper selection of m you have proper efficiency more and more number of numbers are generated and the period will be higher and higher. Now, what we see that we have studied so far that normally we take this modulo value as 2 raised to the power some integers. So, that is one preferred one while in normal practice we prefer to go for the decimal presentation of the numbers. So, in that we feel easier to take the remainder value. So, we have you have simply to take the last values. So, if suppose modulus value is uh, something like 10 raise to the power 3 or so the last 3 digits are simply taken. So, suppose modulus value is uh, 10 raise to the power 3 or 1000 and if you get the 4 digit number. So, only the last 3 digits are taken as the remainder ones. So, the same thing applies in the case of uh, binary representation also. In case of binary representation also you have some number and once you have the modulus. So, modulus is 2 raised to the power b. So, the last b significant digits towards the right that is coming as the remainder. So, that can be checked and that we can see by an example. So, what we see that most digital computers use binary representation of numbers and remaindering operation can be conducted efficiently uh, when the modulo is in power of 2. So, rightmost binary digits are taken just like an example you can see if you have m raised to the power 2 a is 9 19 c is 0 and x not that is c d is 63. So, now in this case what you see is x 1 will be. So, this is a multiplicative type of generator you have 19 into 63. So, it is 1197 1197 and it will be mod m. So, if mod is 10 raised to the power 2, so mod you can write 10 raised to the power 2. So, what you do is only the this 10 raised to the power b that is b 2 is b. So, only the last 2 digits are taken. So, it is 97. Similarly, you go to x 2. x 2 will be 97 multiplied by 19 that is all and mod again 10 square. So, 97 multiplied by 19 it will be 1843. So, it will be 1843. So, in that case 43 will come because it is equal to 1843. So, only these two digits is coming. So, that will go on similarly further x 3 will be 43 into 19. So, that is 817. So, 43 into 19 817 that is 817 mod 100. So, it will be last two digits 17 like that it will be coming. So, this way you see in the binary you know in the decimal representation we find it easier. Similar thing happens in the case of binary representation. So, in the case of binary representation suppose you have the number 173 and mod 2 raised to the power 6. So, if so that is 64 and 173 comes. Now, if you look at 173, 173 will be represented in what terms in the binary. So, it will be 2. So, this 173 can be written as 1 into 2 raised to the power. So, we have to come to 128. So, 2 raised to the power 7 plus then 45 is remaining. 
So, 45 will be again 2 raised to the power 5 is 32. So, 6 will be 0, 2 raised to the power 6 is 0 here. Then you have 1 into 2 raised to the power 5. So, that is your uh, 32. So, your 13 is remaining. 13 means uh, 2 raised to the power 4 is 16. So, again that will not be there. So, 0 into 10, 2 raised to the power 4 plus uh, then you have 1 into 2 raised to the power 3. So, that is 8. So, you have 5 remaining 1 into 2 raised to the power 2, 4 remaining, 1 remaining, 1 into 2 raised to the power. So, 0 into 2 raised to the power 1 plus 1 into 2 raised to the power 0. So, we write it as 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1. Now, if we take the mod of this number with 2 raised to the power 6 means 64. So, that comes out to be 45. Now, what will be the 45? 45 is nothing but we are getting 45 from here onwards. So, if you try to find 45, for 45 it will be 1 into 2 raised to the power 5. 32 plus 13. So, 0 into 2 raised to the power 4 plus 1 into 2 raised to the power 3 plus 1 into 2 raised to the power 2 plus 0 2 raised to the power 1 plus 1 2 raised to the power 0. So, it is coming as 1 0 1 1 0 1. Now, look at this, this is nothing but this is the last b digits, you have b equal to 6, this was this is 2 raised to the power b. So, b is 66, b is 6, your b is 6 here. So, what we see is this last 6 digits, last b digits that is last 6 digits. So, what we see is that the remaindering operation becomes quite easy when we take this uh, system of binary digits and uh, in that case you simply take the last b digits. So, either be it uh, the decimal presentation or be it the binary presentation you can get this and since most of the computers are working on this binary presentation. So, this becomes easier for the computer. Then most digital computers use, so as we discuss that most of the digital computers are using this binary presentation of numbers. So, modulo or remaindering operation can be conducted efficiently and you have to simply use the b rightmost digits. So, that you get uh, the remainder numbers quite uh, early, quite efficiently. As computing power has increased the complexity of the system uh, that we are able to simulate has also increased. Now, the thing is that uh, many a times you require large number of these generators, I mean uh, number generated numbers. So, even these linear congruence generators are not sufficient to generate that many numbers where you can generate enough number of uh, random numbers. So, another way is to combine the you know linear congruential generators. So, you have two streams and you are combining taking the a and m of both uh, these uh, streams and they are joining together. So, that is known as combined linear congruential generators. So, by combining the two or more co multiplicative congruential generators in such a way that the combined generator has good statistical properties and a longer period. So, you have composite generators, you have combined uh, congruential generators, linear congruential generators also by which you can uh, generate the random numbers having larger you know periods.
So, that is used in the simulations nowadays where large and large number of numbers are and you can read them from the standard book of modeling and simulation. So, that you get used to those methods. Now, testing for uniformity and independence. So, once you have generated the random numbers, then you need to test them. So, this since these random number generators are deterministic, we know that which of the random number is going to come because it is based on certain mathematical formulation. So, we need to see that these numbers which are generated, they are really uniform and they are independent. So, for that uh, we have certain type of test which we carry on it. Now, the test which we carry on it are the frequency test and the autocorrelation test. Now, in the frequency test we basically, so that is test for the uniformity. Now, in that case there are two kinds of test which are done one is chi square test, another is Kolgomorov Smirnov test. So, what it does is, is basically looks at, so the main purpose as we had discussed that once you have x i and x i plus 1, x i and x i plus 1 should be plotted against each other and we should see that the plot which we are getting, the points which we are getting it should be if it is completely you know spread in the domain it means it is completely uniform otherwise they may not be uniform. So, they may be you know non uniform there may be you know either uh, they may be tilted towards one side or other side. So, mean as, as we had discussed many points that may be faced. So, these tests we will try to discuss how we are going to test in the uniformity and independence. Now, let us see, uh, let us discuss about the Kolmogorov and Smirnov test. So, in that test basically what we do is, now, now first of all uh, there is certain hypothesis for the testing of the uniformity. What is that hypothesis? The hypothesis is telling like this, this is the null hypothesis H naught and it reads that if the numbers are distributed uniformly on the interval 0 1, then failure to reject the null hypothesis means that there is no evidence of non-uniformity which has been detected. Okay. There is certain hypothesis, you have certain testing methods and you have some standard data. So, once the condition which is basically set, if it meets that condition, then we can say, so that null hypothesis if it is, so if it is said that it is uh, satisfying that condition. In that case, the we tell that the, you do not have much of the evidence to reject that it is not uniformly distributed. So, failure to reject the null hypothesis means that there is no proper evidence of non-uniformity, which has been detected on the basis of the test. And it does not also imply that further testing of the generator for uniformity is unnecessary. So, you can further go for testing the uniformity and you can see and you cannot say that it is unnecessary. So, you can see the necessity of further testing. So, that is known as null hypothesis for testing of uniformity. Similarly, you have hypothesis for testing of independence. Again here also you have the null hypothesis. So, H naught, so if it may be independent, it may not be. So, if it is satisfying the condition, it you can say that it is independently distributed, independently generated and if not, so null hypothesis H naught reads that the numbers are independent. If they are meeting that, that condition, you are generating certain numbers based on the ideal conditions and if the that condition is satisfied we are telling that the numbers are independent. Failure to reject the null hypothesis means that uh, no evidence of independence has been detected on the basis of the test. This does not imply 
that further testing of the generator for independence is unnecessary. So, in these cases what happens that you have set of uh, numbers which are to be tested, these sets are basically uh, going through certain mathematical computation and then we are finding certain statistical parameter and then we are seeing whether this parameter can work I mean whatever you get whether this will be ok or not. So, for each test a level of significance alpha is stated. Now, when we are thinking of having any test you are signifying a level alpha like it this alpha is 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 or 0 0.06 or so. The, the level alpha is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis given that null hypothesis is true. So, that basically tells you the probability of rejecting the hypothesis. So, its value may be something like 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. So, it tells you the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. The another significance of this alpha is that when we are doing more number of tests. So, if you are doing one number of test it is ok. If you are to doing several number of test on the same set of numbers then probability of rejecting the null hypothesis on at least one test by chance alone is increasing. So, basically if you are setting this alpha as 0 0.05 it means for one test there is 5 percent chance that for one test there is chance that it may be rejected. Similarly, if alpha is 0 0.05 and if there are 5 different tests conducted on a sequence of numbers in that case probability of rejecting the null hypothesis on at least one test will be increasing. So, it will be increased by 5 times. So, it means if it is once then it will be 5 percent and if it is done suppose n number of times then this one of the at one of the time it basically rejects the null hypothesis test that basically increases to 5 times whatever the alpha value is set. So, it will increase to 5 times alpha that is 0 0.05 that is 0 0.25 5 times 0 0.05 so 0 0.25 so that probability is increasing. So, what happens in normal cases you are given certain set of numbers and I mean you generate these numbers and once you generate these numbers then you are basically converting it into, into you know um, variates between 0 and 1 and by dividing it with m and once you divide get that value then that value is subject to this testing. Now, for testing you need to specify the value of alpha. So, once you have the alpha now for that you have certain you know methodology how to go further. So, we will uh, see in our next lecture that if you have been given the set of numbers. So, first of all the numbers in the Kolmogorov uh, Smirnov test what we do is the numbers which are given first of all they are arranged in certain orders and then some parameters are calculated and these parameters on the basis of these parameters you have another parameter which will be coming from the ideal you know table. And if this value is lesser than this ideal value from the table we say that we cannot reject it and if it is more then we reject it. Similar is the case in the case of chi square test. So, in that also you find a parameter based on the interval numbers and then the uh, you know uniform ideal uniform distribution uh, you know samples and based on that you get another number is chi square is specified and again that value being less than the uniform distributed value in that case we say that we cannot reject it. 
so that passes the condition of uniformity. So, this way the condition of this this condition of uniformity are uh, you know tested. So, maybe in the next lecture once we get time. So, we have in the next lecture we will discuss about this uh, uniformity and independence test for such type of you know random number generators and we can check it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.